Terrence Sterling, an unarmed black man, was shot and killed by D.C. police nine months ago. His family is still waiting for answers about what happened and whether the officers involved are going to face charges. Police at this point not talking, neither is the U.S. attorney. And tonight we've taken all the reporting we've done and the videos we've obtained, and we've reconstructed the night Sterling was killed. Delia Gonsalves brings us the story you'll see only on WUSA 9. You did make it. The biggest question for the Sterling family is what led up to the shooting? And I had to figure that out, but I don't have the video, so I had to use what I do have. Clues from the police report, court documents, and the video that they did release from the police body cam, eyewitness cell phones, and even stuff I found on YouTube. But all of that video shows just a narrow view of what happened here. We are at 3rd and M Streets Northwest. This is where Terrence Sterling was shot to death around 430 September 11th. Now let's walk through the bigger picture. This is a Google image of that intersection. Now we know based on evidence that Terrence Sterling was driving southbound on third heading towards the tunnel. Police admit on the record they were pursuing the motorcycle. Now witnesses tell us that's when the cruiser without lights and sirens on pulled into the intersection, stopping at an angle right around the crosswalk. And that is when the motorcycle struck the passenger side door. Police say they made this move to block the motorcycle from crossing that intersection. Now, the original police report explaining why an officer here in D.C. shot and killed a man amounts to just three lines. One, they attempted to stop the suspect. Two, the suspect intentionally drove his motorcycle into the passenger side of the cruiser and three the officer discharged his service weapon now we can tell you there were witnesses including one who was in that travel lane pulled out his cell phone and started recording he says the cruiser cut off the motorcycle the impact was likely a slow one because the video shows terrence sterling still straddling his motorcycle even after he was shot and according to the family's lawyer terrence was never thrown from the bike, he actually tried to swerve around the cruiser, but couldn't. And that's when witnesses say Officer Brian Trainer, who was in the passenger seat, rolled down his passenger side window, shooting Terrence Sterling twice, once in the neck and once in the back. Terrence Sterling was not armed. Now remember, all of this happened and the body camera was not turned on. And that brings us to the second part of the story, the video. Officer Trainer activated his body camera after the shooting. Now, we've blurred some of the most graphic images, but you can still see Terrence bleeding from two gunshot wounds. His helmet is on, he's straddling his bike, he's not moving. This is the view from Officer Trainer's body camera. Trainer searches for a bag. I don't know where my... He calls for help. We are at 3rd and New York. But there is some confusion about which block. Now, here's the eyewitness cell phone video. Take a look. It matches the moment Trainer's unnamed partner begins chest compression. It also captures the face of Brian Trainer, 27 years old, four years on the force, kneeling next to a man who is bleeding to death. You can hear his voice. Come on, man. You also hear witnesses in the background and the one who has that cell phone. Dude ain't do nothing. He ran to the joint and he shot him. And then, for more than a minute, you can hear Officer Trainer and his partner talking to Terrence. Open your eyes. Come on, buddy. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Now just third and third and Mary. In the end, that's about five minutes of video before the ambulance arrives. Here's the question. Is there more video that we haven't seen yet? We do know there are cameras at this intersection, but they're all pointing in the opposite direction towards New York Avenue. Did those cameras capture anything? We don't know. And we still don't know if Officer Trainer's unnamed partner was wearing a body camera himself and if he turned that on. What we do know 
is that Officer Trainer violated police policy by failing to turn on his body camera immediately. As a result, the mayor and the police chief updated that policy, now requiring officers to check in with dispatch right away to confirm that their cameras are indeed rolling. In Northwest, Delia Gonsalves, WUSA 9. Now, Delia has done some exceptional reporting on this case, and it all began with a conversation with his parents. It's raw and it's emotional. The full and unedited version is online for you tonight and on our app and the WSA 9 website. 